Another staff shakeup at the White House. President Trump tweeted Saturday morning, Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke will leave the administration by the end of the year. The president praised Zinke's accomplishments in the position and said a replacement will be announced next week. Zinke has been under scrutiny for his spending habits, and he is the subject of several investigations by the Interior Department's Office of the Inspector General and the Justice Department. The move comes a day after the White House announced Mick Mulvaney will serve as acting Acting Chief of Staff for the President. Mulvaney will replace current Chief of Staff John Kelly, marking the end of a rocky tenure. Errol Barnett is at the White House. So, Errol, do we know the reason behind this change now? Well, Rena, it appears the reason is because uh, Secretary Zinke is the MVP, the most vulnerable player of President Trump's cabinet right now. Vulnerable because Democrats will be coming in in 2019 with their oversight mandate, having already pledged to look into Zinke's actions as Interior Secretary. He's also vulnerable because of the uh, roughly one dozen investigations, as you've alluded to, either from the Interior Department or from an independent federal agency, each of them looking into uh, his actions as Interior Secretary. And of course, this administration is facing mounting uh, legal pressure as the special counsel and various federal prosecutors look into Trump-affiliated entities, the transition, the campaign, and the foundation. So even for this administration right now, despite President Trump saying positive things about the Interior Secretary um, over the past few months, Zinke is too much of a, of a legal liability going forward. Do you think these investigations into his behavior will continue even after he leaves his position? Well, it is possible. Uh, the Department of Justice was referred one of the Interior Department's investigations, and Democrats' end goal may not just be Zinke's ouster. Many Democrats, feeling as if they're riding this blue wave uh, to check the Trump administration, may want to go further than that and look into ways in which uh, that Zinke and the Trump administration rolled back a lot of the environmental and anti-pollution uh, policies put in place by the Obama administration. So the end goal here may not be uh, Zinke's ouster effectively for Democrats, they could continue to dig and continue to investigate to undo potentially some of what he's done. Any sense, Errol, who might be able to replace him? Well, it's not clear yet. We know that the number two at the Interior Department um, will take over for the time uh, being that individual, I just have a note here in front of me and his name escapes me, David Bernhardt. And rather than there being one key replacement for the Interior Secretary, you're hearing a number of prominent Republicans' names uh, being thrown about, among them Dean Heller of Nevada and Scott Walker, the outgoing governor of, of Wisconsin. Whoever this replacement will be, we're told that an announcement will be made in the next few days, uh, potentially midweek. You know, as I mentioned, this week's this week has been sort of a reset for the president. We know his chief of staff, John Kelly, also, will also step down by the end of the year. Do you get the sense this is just a normal reset, cleaning house before the new year for the president? Some of it is to be expected, Rena, but some of it is unusual as well. Just in the past few months, um, you know, this is the middle of President Trump's first term. It's after a midterm election, so it's typical for there to be a shakeup. U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley um, is resigning. The Attorney General Jeff Sessions has already left. We know that, as you mentioned, Chief of Staff John Kelly is out by the end of the year, and now there needs to be a new Interior Secretary. What's different this time around and at a moment like this is the relatively shallow bench in the Trump administration and beyond when it comes to replacements. When we uh, acknowledge the fact that Mick Mulvaney, who is the current budget director, was is now the new acting chief of staff, we have to also note that he was here at the White House on Friday, plotting out a way to avoid a government shutdown. So Mick Mulvaney already has a very big and important job. And then by Friday evening, President Trump announces that he is his new acting chief of staff. Let's also remember that President Trump's top choice last week, Nick Ayers, that's Vice President Mike Pence's chief of staff, couldn't come to an agreement with the president because uh, Ayers wanted to be um, an interim chief of staff and President Trump wanted a full-time two-year commitment. So the fact that Mulvaney, who already has an important job and has other things to do, has been announced as the acting uh, chief of staff really says it all. Errol Barnett coming to us from the White House. Errol, thank you very much. You got it.